Having played through all of Echoes of Wisdom, here are 10 secrets I found, from the obvious ones in Link's house in Sutherland Village to the hidden one right outside his house. That's the number 10 slot. But first, yeah, let's look at that house on the northwest side of the Southern Village. This room is just filled with Easter eggs and references, from the books on his shelf being red, blue, and green, matching the colors of Din, Nehru, and Feyror, to his hat tucked away on his messily unmade bed, to the carving of an owl that references the owl from Link's awakening, his guide through that journey. Actually, what I said about references being the basis for ridiculous theories works here too. Link's awakening matches the art style of Echoes of Wisdom and is set in a dream world. Most Zelda games start with Link waking up, so given that his bed is such a mess, is it possible that prior to Echoes of Wisdom, Link has just woken up from his adventures in Link's Awakening, where he was dreaming of this wise owl that looks over him, and of course the evil rift-colored Ganon? How that makes sense with the final cutscene? I don't know, maybe it was a dream within a dream. Anyway, I'll tell the three strikes. There's one outside Link's house, but first let's hop over to Hyrule Castle Town. It's filled with hidden little gems like a shield hanging over the barracks, reminiscent of the knight's shield, uh, to a tucked away piece of ancient stone on the castle ceiling, which oddly itself looks to be made of the same material. But the true number two on this list is yet another Link's Awakening reference. You may have seen it yourself. The mysterious Poe's voice on a shelf inside one of the houses of Castle Town, a creature that perishes to the Ballad of the Windfish, but in this game it appears to just be a doll. In the earlier stages of the game, below the castle where Zelda and her adorable cat sleeps, is a statue of Hylia, connecting the lore of this game to the wider story, suggesting that like Skyward Sword and Breath of the Wild, Zelda is still the reincarnation of this goddess, protected of course by the Sheikah, of whom, number four, both Lubri and Lady Impa are part of. We don't see many references to the Sheikah in this game, but certainly as seen by the designs on their back of the Sheikah Eye and the incredible skills of an aged Lady Impa, they both are. Lubri then helping Link with his mighty bombs, arrows, and swords now leans into yet another absurd Zelda theory, because while the swirls on the design of the sword originally had people believing that these relics were possibly related to the Zonai in origin, now we know the truth. At least in part, this technology is Sheikah technology, making the blue bombs of Lubri more closely related to the runic bombs from the Sheikah pad in Breath of the Wild, and the mighty sword, perhaps a Sheikah attempt at recreating a sword like the Master Sword. Speaking of the Sheikah, in Kakariko Village we see a lot of landmarks similar to those seen in Ocarina of Time, everything from the windmill on the hill to the graveyard and of course, the well. There are a few wells in this game, much like in Breath of the Wild where you can hop in them, and actually even the last entry on this list is about a well, but this well is unlike any other. It's covered, at least to begin with. The cover can be removed using try, and inside it's just some berries, but why then is this well covered up? With a unique lid, a unique piece of detailing that doesn't appear anywhere else in the game. The answer, of course, is because this well is perhaps going to future house, or has already housed, depending on where in the timeline this goes, some dark and grotesque creature. Something too twisted to fit into the cute chibi art style of Echoes of Wisdom, and that hopefully Tri will never create an echo of. I'm talking, of course, about Ocarina of Time's Dead Hand from beneath the well in Kakariko Village. Strolling across Hyrule, we also see wanted signs of Zelda. One of the other games that Echoes of Wisdom parallels a lot is Link's Awakening, a game in which we can also, sure enough, find wanted posters, except this time of Link. And now we move into some Easter eggs that have some very light, very minor story spoilers, so spoiler warning. There are so many Ocarina of Time references in this game, including the Kakariko Well, as well as Kakariko Village and all of the locations that I previously mentioned, but in addition there's an outfit that you get halfway through the game, the Royal Travel Attire. Noble attire passed down through the Royal Family, it fits perfectly and is well suited for a long journey, and of course it looks an awful lot like Zelda's outfit from Ocarina of Time. But this isn't the only connection. We also see in this game, for the first time ever in the franchise since Ocarina of Time, Volvagia as a sort of fire deity over the Elden Co volcano with the Gorons. Lord Jabu Jabu, named again exactly the same as the one that appears in Ocarina of Time, looking over the Zoras in the Jabu waters. And then finally, as seen in the trailer, we have the Great Deku Tree. So all three of the main spirits of fire, water, and earth are right here. This, combined with the lore of the game, makes me believe that this game is set very early in the timeline, possibly even before Ocarina of Time. 
In the trailers, we had seen the Goron, Gerudo, Deku, and Hylians, and of course the Zora, but as the game progressed, I was curious as to who would be residing in the province of Lanayru, especially after the Zora's story was already completed. Typically, they are aligned. I wondered if perhaps we might be seeing Gerito kept secret from us by Nintendo, but to my surprise, we meet Condal. A Condal. It's not explicitly stated what species Condal is. And this one isn't so much an Easter egg, but more a curiosity of mine. There are three candidates here I'd like to discuss. Obviously, and most famously, there is Twilight Princess's Yeti species, of which there are two variations, both of which look quite different and look somewhat similar to this. It also is in keeping with Condal's story of there only being two or three of his kind around in the game. But then you see the antlers, and maybe you think about Phantom Hourglass. There, there are the Yuk and the Anuki, two separate neighboring tribes, much like the River and Caesar that have a peace treaty that they live under. You could certainly see how Condal's brother might be a Yuk, and that how he might be an Anuki with the antlers that we can see here. But perhaps they are all one and the same species. You'll have to let me know in the comments, and maybe I can make an absurd Zelda theory on this. Right, just two left, and this first one is a big deal. In the story, Ganon has been taking kids from across Hyrule into the still world, and they've been returning mute. This is now acting as a canon explanation as to why Link doesn't speak. And actually, most recently in Breath of the Wild, we have had canon explanations like this. In Zelda's diary, Zelda says that it's necessary for Link to stay strong and silently bear any burden. It's just something he chooses to do. But here, it's not a choice. We're given a canonical reason, and that's important, because the reason that Link doesn't speak very much is because he is the trope, literally the definition of, a silent protagonist. A person that we inhabit and we can see ourselves in when we play the game. But we need that here because, of course, Link is not the protagonist in this game. It's Zelda. Wait, why doesn't Zelda talk in this game? What? Hang on. I mean, she makes hand-waving gestures like she is talking, but she doesn't actually make any noise. No dialogue box comes up. That's the exact same as Link in previous games. So, wait, is she mute as well? What's going on here? And finally, back to the southern village, the one that I teased at the very beginning. There's another very small Easter egg just outside of Link's house by the well. At first, it seems like a very ordinary well, one you jump in, except there is something odd, something out of place here. There's a bed inside. Does somebody sleep in this well? Well, perhaps it's Link from time to time when he doesn't want to sleep in his own bed. I believe what this is referencing is in Tears of the Kingdom, where what was Link's house from Breath of the Wild is now Zelda, or Link and Zelda's house, and Zelda has a secret well that she retreats to to study. And speaking of Zelda's room, what about that Tingle statue in her room in Skyward Sword? Clearly, Tingle is 